ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to Players Club 2.
It's Carly Bravo in here. It's Carly Bravo. There you go. Let's take Carly Bravo for an example. Carly Bravo is a phenomenal rapper. He is. Y'all yeah, have heard that nigga. That nigga's a phenomenal rapper. Carly Bravo is now a wrestler. He is. This nigga Carly said, I would rather get slammed through a table than do this music shit. And I don't fucking blame him. I don't fucking blame him. I went to one of Carly Bravo's matches. I did. I went to two of them at that first one. I don't know where the fuck he had us at that first one. I was scared. I was like, where the fuck are we at? They had us way out there in the hills have eyes. All them weird, grambling looking ass white people. Shout out to the white people, I see y'all here. <laughs> these motherfuckers was, uh, they, these motherfuckers where we went though, this shit was, this shit was different. This was cousins fucking cousins where we was. It was. But God damn it, the second time he fought, now that shit was lit. The niggas had us in the arena and shit. I was at the top. Where we was where me and my partners, we was at the top, Mike. My nigga killed. Somebody kicked Carly and the Bravo in the back of his head so hard. Nigga, I damn near ran down to the ring like, the fuck? Hey, 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 nigga, don't you kick in the back of his head like that? This shit's supposed to be fake. <laughs> motherfucker looked at me like, what the fuck did you say? I said, you, I, I said, don't you kick him in the back. I'm gonna go back to my seat, but don't you fucking do it no more. That's, man, this shit, this shit is fucking serious. Because it used to be a time where if you fucking rap, you just rap. If you fucking song, you just song. Now you gotta do every fucking thing. And if you, it, it used to be if you rapped and you were good, you got on. If you sung and you were good, you got on. Now you gotta do every fucking, you gotta, you gotta rap, you gotta sing, you gotta fucking dance, you gotta goddamn create an app. <laughs> you gotta fucking bungee jump without a bungee. You gotta do all type of stupid shit. That's why I love that interview Kanye West did. I loved it on Drink Champs. I love it. I loved it, because he talked about TikTok. And I love that part. That was my favorite part, I rewound it. I don't even know if that's a word, but I did it. <laughs> I just kept rewinding that shit. He, he was like, if another nigga talked to me about TikTok, I'm a fucking god. And I felt that, because I just released a song yesterday. Yeah, I heard y'all out here shaking your ass to it. That little yeah, that little yeah. But I released a song yesterday, motherfucker came up to me talking about some, well, you know, with a hand, if you don't put that on the top, you're not gonna get any traction. Man, fuck you. <laughs> For real. If you don't like the fucking song, you just don't like the song, go on to another one. I ain't finna be coming up on here, coming up with that, in my mirror, coming up with dances for the shit. For y'all to hardly like the motherfucker anyway. <laughs> fuck that. This is beautiful. <laughs> Y'all make some noise for yourselves, man. Y'all like my jacket? Motherfucker clean, ain't it? Shout out my nigga Manolo Prado. Manolo Prado. Shout out to the Atlanta Braves World Series champion. Yeah. Nigga, I was at all them damn games out there with T.M. and Mike on the outside, nigga. I was all out there in them games, goddamn. Shout out to my nigga Manolo Prado. Hey, happy birthday, though. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's love. That's love. That brings me to my next topic. Nah, but for real, shout out to uh, Manolo, man. Shout out to Klarna as well and Afterpay. <laughs> nigga, I owe them so much for this outfit, nigga. <laughs> These shoes ain't gonna get paid off the 2024, goddamn. You know, a firm just let you pay $2 a month and you good. I'd be like, damn, really? <laughs> nigga, when I found that out, I was buying everything off of a firm, nigga. <laughs> I firmly purchased this item. <laughs> I, uh, this is beautiful because it is my birthday today and it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, the, see, yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you. Um, and it ain't. It ain't, Happy it ain't. God, all right, goddamn. 
I only get one buck. I done called it out to I've turned fucking 40 in this bitch. Nah, for real. That's love. I thank y'all so much. That's love. And see, it's one of them things where it's, it's, it's one of them things where I'm not upset that it's my birthday. I've been troubled. <laughs> I've been troubled because of how old I turned. <laughs> nigga, to, today I am 35, nigga. <laughs> don't, man, don't you fucking clap. <laughs> just get it out your fucking system, because I, I, I just, I, I don't, I, I'm not with it. I, I, fuck that. And y'all, the man was, oh, you're in your prime. Oh, you're in your prime. Oh, you're 35. Ooh, you're in your prime. 30s is the new 20s. 30s is, that's the stupidest shit I ever heard in my fucking life. 30s is the new, my back hurt every, every day, nigga, every day. Fuck. I didn't even do nothing yesterday. <laughs> Lay down and watch Ozark all day and woke up like, God damn it. There's fire on my back. Spinal. <laughs> For real, man, this shit is fucking crazy. And see the thing, see, I wrote, see, 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 Facebook and fuck Facebook. Facebook don't do nothing but throw your ass in jail and remind you of some shit you don't even want to know about. Threw me in, they, the motherfuckers threw me in jail today on my birthday. I'm in Facebook jail today for 30 days. So if y'all say happy birthday to me on there and I ain't responded. Well, that's why. But Facebook reminded me of my 25th birthday. They did, and I posted it. 25, 10 years ago. 10 fucking years ago. And I remember when I was 25. I remember that shit. I was a spry ass 25. I was spry? I was ready for every motherfucking thing. Nigga, just, what, 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 what? what? You could call me, nigga, you could call me when I was 25. You could call me at 2.30 in the morning. Say, Willie Hen, we at the fucking gym. We at the fucking gym. It's nine of us. We finna play a full court basketball. Matter of fact, we finna play multiple games. It's nine of us. We need one more. You down? Uh, where y'all at? Where? Nigga, we at Berean. Oh, Berean? Oh, that's right up the street. Hell yeah, nigga, I'm down with, what's up? I had nigga pull up, and I will pull up. I jump out the bed, throw the shorts on, cause I sleep butt ass naked. <laughs> throw the shorts on, throw the shoes on. I'm out the fucking door. I'm in the gym, I don't even stretch. I play four to five to six to seven full court basketball games, and I go the fuck back home like nothing happened. <laughs> nigga, call me now. <laughs> Talking about some fucking basketball. <laughs> Nigga, you couldn't get me to watch basketball at 2.30 in the morning, let alone compete. <laughs> Nigga, we finna play now. You couldn't even get me to answer the phone at 2. You can't get me to answer the phone at 2.30 a.m. or p.m. <laughs> Half this crowd <laughs> has experience of me not answering that phone multiple fucking times. I hate the fucking phone, man. But I remember 25, I remember when I, it used to certain things I used to do when I was 25. Like I used to love to go to the club. I used to love the club. The club was my fucking shit. You know, and we would do certain things involving the club like pregame. Hmm? Motherfuckers don't even pregame no more. What you call the little pregame you did? You got grab your little drink and then you had it on out here. You didn't see pregame back in the day used to be an experience. It was an experience because it was the it was the congregation of us being together in one chosen spot. And we getting fucked up. And what was our go-to drink 10 years ago? What was that bullshit we used to drink 10 years ago? For, whoa, 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 whoa. She just said it. For motherfuck. That was the explosion in your brain every time you drunk one of them motherfuckers. Nigga, I don't know why we used to drink that bullshit. Look at everybody here. See, everybody here talking now because they telling each other about their own little stories. See, 
Everybody in this motherfucker has a horrible Four local story. Whether you want to tell it or whether you don't, I myself have one. I, uh, my ex-girlfriend almost died in my custody on Four Loco. Now, let me, wait a minute, wait, wait. Let me explain it, let me explain it. Now, I don't want none of y'all running out of here talking about some, man, that nigga, Willie, he ain't been getting drunk and he beat up on bitches. No, don't you run out of here telling nobody that shit. Now, this story does involve, involve a little physical contact, but, but this way, just let me tell the damn, let me tell the story while y'all looking at me judging me. She had, I don't know, she was, she was, something was wrong, she was sick or something. She was, she, she had, and she was on some meds. She was sick in her, she was sick in her body. She couldn't get well. I don't know what was going on. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't remember. But she was sick and she was taking these meds, right? And then some random ass fucking day, some random ass day, we just decided to celebrate nothing. <laughs> Me, her, another one of my partners. And we was just drinking multiple Four Locos. Now, real niggas know you drink one and you're done. You drink two, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? Something is going on in the home. Somebody is <laughs> disturbed. And we was doing this. We was drinking these fucking locos. We was drinking these locos. And I remember we was all in my mama's basement. Shout out to my mama and my, my uh, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about them a little later. I don't know why we used to do some of the things we used to do in that fucking basement. My Christian madre and padre. I don't know why we used to do some of the shit we used to do in that fucking basement, in they, in they house. But we used to do it. And we was in that basement getting fucked up. And we was, and, and she was sitting on this big ass speaker in the studio that we used to have down there. She was sitting on this speaker. And I remember me and my partner here, we had to go grab some upstairs. And we went upstairs, we looked there for about five minutes. We came back downstairs, and she was sitting on that speaker, slumped like that, with her fucking tongue hanging out. Oh, yeah, yo, yeah, oh, oh, I know. Nigga, I came downstairs, and I seen her down there. What the fuck y'all talking about over there? Hey, hey, can y'all quiet the hell down? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but, yeah, so she was sitting on this, and then she was slumped with her tongue fucking hanging out. And I'm drinking four locos, drunk as hell, so the only thing I could come to was she was dead. <laughs> For real. I was scared as fuck. And I was sitting on that butt, I, she was sitting on that speaker, and I was looking at her, and for three minutes, I just stared, I didn't even touch her. I just stared at her. And every hope and dream I had in my mind, just vanished, just flying out of my head. I was so fucking scared, y'all. And then my partner ended up coming downstairs. This nigga walk in the room, eyes wide. Man, what the fuck happened? I'm like, man, I don't know. He was like, well, is she dead? I was like, nigga, well, she ain't moving. This motherfucker gonna quote some shit from Lil Giants. <laughs> As bad as the position we in. He talking about something, is she dead? I'm like, well, she ain't moving. This nigga gonna say, well, you killed her, Icebox. I said, nigga, get your fucking head in the game. This is serious, nigga. I'm like, shit, man, we can go to prison for this shit. He talking about something, who the fuck, what you mean? Who, 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 who? going to prison. I couldn't have took my phone out my pocket fast enough. <laughs> nigga, us. Nigga, I took a picture of his stupid ass. Nigga, if I go down, we all going down. I said, nigga, we got to come up with a solution. So she's sitting there still slumped, tongue hanging out. I was like, nigga, this is fucking serious. And I just started panicking. But I remembered about my Christian Madre and Padre's home. I said, well, we in a holy home. Maybe it's some holy powers in this one. <laughs> and I looked at that girl, I said, uh-uh, we, we, can't, we can't do this. We can't do this. <laughs> and I was just trying to form a plan. And 
And I just walked up to her and I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of here. I passed her. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't punch her. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pop her. I papped her. Gave her a good old pap. So I noticed when I papped her, she made a little noise like, uh, but that was like, that was, that was something. That was something. That was the something I needed. So then this time I put a little stank on it. And I'm like, I got it. We got to do it. We got to, we got to get him. And I said, in the name of this, come on And I papped her again. So sometimes, see, 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 that book I know said, so you got to call that spirit out by name. <laughs> Talking about four locos in the spirit. Yeah, man. I, but, but that's, but that second time I papped her. She looked up. She looked at me and she's alive today. If I wouldn't have damn near knocked her head off, she, she might not be here to tell it. Everybody in here got that fucking four loco story. We used to drink them shits. We would drink those at the at the pregame. Now where are we going? Ten years ago on a Saturday night. We get now we got the foco four locos in us at the pregame. Where the fuck we going? Ten years ago Saturday night. Uh uh. Mm, uh uh. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Who said it? Somebody said it. Central Central motherfucking state. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you hear the nigga? Oh, 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 yeah. See the beauty of Central Station? You could have a time of your life and be this close to getting your head blown off, but, but the fun of it was you survived. You would tell that story when you got, and you would do it every week. You would go right back to the danger, but you would do it. Central Station, you didn't even have to like the club to go to Central Station. That big ass club. You could just go in there, walk your little laps, and walk around and get some exercise while you're in there. Central Station used to be the shit. And we would pull up into the parking lot. We would pull up to the parking lot of Central Station. And what the fuck we would do? Oh, no, see, yeah, I, I come from this area. You know, we, you know, little, you know, pop, yeah. Yeah, pop a little beans, you know, a little, a little one or two. Yeah, I, I, I come from the, 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 the bean popping area. I, I do. See, cause, yeah, I did a little eggs, I did a little eggs. I did. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. Because see, our, dr our drug dealers back then were, they were nice, distinguished gentlemen. They were great men. These niggas now trying to kill y'all. I swear, these niggas now, I seen some, some of y'all didn't walk the hill with that shit on you now. Got that powder, got that powder. You got it on you, and you better be careful because that savage Fenty all in that shit. That fentanyl, they trying to knock y'all. See, look, it got quiet. God damn it. <laughs> Some of y'all in here finna snort your last line right now. Finna go in that bathroom. Hype! Hell yeah, let's eat it! That fucking venti. For real. But see, back then, it was cool. You know, they, they might have put a little extra, little something in them little beans. It'd give you a little extra rock. But you wouldn't die. Yeah, they give you a little extra rock, you know? A little extra little song. But you wouldn't die. So you would take, so now we on the beans. So now we got the four locos. We got the beans. We didn't even mind no fucking free line. We used to tear that free line. We didn't give a fuck. We was fucked up already. We were waiting that free line because you knew when you got in Central Station, all you needed was 20 bucks. Why all you needed was 20 bucks? Because you go to that fucking bar and what they used to sell? Them $2 blue motherfuckers. What nothing $2 about them damn drinks. Them strong ass drinks. They used to just pour the fucking, I'm like, what is y'all overhead in here? <laughs> are all of your drinks, I mean, I look at other motherfuckers, in the are all of your drinks this fucking strong? I mean, just pour the whole bottle in there and give you a little splash of blue. <laughs> little blue. Send you on your fucking way. 
So now you in the club and you and, 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 and you and you lit as you are lit as lit can be. And there were two types of niggas in Central Station at that point in time. You got the super invincible nigga that just feel like nobody could beat his ass. Which is why so many fights went down in Central Station. And then you had the other nigga. You had me. That dancing ass nigga. And couldn't nobody motherfucking touch me, nigga. On the on the on the on the triple A. I, I called it the triple the beans. <laughs> local. And that blue mother, that's the triple H. If I'm on the triple H, nigga, you can't. And it's one group. It was one group. And, it, and, it, and you would play they, play they music, and I don't know what the fuck it was about this group and that lead, and that lead singer. And I, I, to this day, I'm connected to this motherfucker. I, I feel like it to this day. And I would go in the motherfucking club, and I'm all fucked up, and they play this shit right here. And nigga, it be like a beam of light. Hold on, cause we gonna get some start in this motherfucker. But you see what it was? Hold on, uh, Fantasia. But you see, that's what would happen. Now you done did it all night, now it's six o'clock in the morning. They kicking you. I'm still in there dance battling and everybody. They done kick my ass up. Can I get a water please? Can somebody bring me a water? I'm dying of it. They, 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 they kicked you out. Now, they kicked you out. And niggas, used to, niggas always used to fight right at the kickout time and they would play love in the, I never understood, they would play love in the club. Niggas in there beating, <laughs> just beating ass and love in the club playing. But where would you go when you left? Cause you didn't go home. Where would you go? The motherfucking Waffle House. And see the importance of that was, you would go to Waffle House and everybody knows they don't pop in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, the superintendent of the church, thank you. <laughs> but you, you, would, you, would, you would go to Waffle House, and the significance about going to Waffle House, they always come and they ask you for that drink that you want. What would you like to drink? Now, you done popped that bean. All bean poppers know. You fuck around there, and you pop that bean, and you order an orange juice, nigga? You want to know what it feels like to turn into a Super Saiyan nigga? Come in! Come in! Look at the older niggas looking at me. What the fuck is he talking about? It's like a phoenix riding out of the ashes, old nigga. Like a phoenix just rising out of the ashes. But that's what it would feel like. And if you had some pussy lined up, <laughs> It was the best thing smoking. If you didn't have no pussy. You would be lit out of your mind for no fucking reason. You done left that club. <laughs> you go home, you just go home and freestyle. It's freestyling for hours. All on YouTube, I heard this beat already, fuck. Freestyling for fucking hours. But the crazy thing about it was, you would finally get a little sleep around about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. But then you will, yeah. All the motherfuckers who ain't never, yeah. This is the, this is that life. So stay off them shits. Just. But you would finally get some sleep around about four or five. But you will work right the fuck back up at six. You only would get like an hour, hour and a half because your partners done called you and they talking about they want to do the same shit all over again. Now it's Sunday night. Now you at prime time. Shout out to Covington Highway, man. You at prime time. You do that shit all the fuck night. 
Now it's six o'clock in the morning again. Am I real niggas gonna get this one? Now where are you going? <laughs> work, nigga. You're going to work. Oh, everybody in here done had a three-day binge. Three-night binge. And then four, on that fourth day, your ass at work. And the only motherfucker at the job who know what you going through is the same nigga who was with your stupid ass. Y'all two in that, don't nobody else at the job know. Y'all working a whole 12 hours. A whole 12 hour shift. And you work the whole motherfucking thing. And that's your 20s. Now, that brings me to me trying to do that in my 30s. I just tried it. It was a very terrible situation. And I didn't tell nobody in here about this shit. But it, it, was, it, happened, it, it happened about, what, about three weeks ago? It just it was, it was recent. I fucked around there and tried, nigga. Because I was like, man, I'm finna turn 35. I want to do some shit that I ain't never done. I want to do something different. I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to celebrate the birthday. I want to do something different. So I said, I said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the club. But I'm going to go by myself. And I don't do, now I didn't pick Central Station. But I was like, I'm going to I'm go to the club, I'm going to go by myself, because I don't never do no shit like that. So I picked the club to go to. Now, I didn't do much research on this club. I just fucking went. I just, I just was like, fuck it, whatever, fuck it. Because it wasn't like Central Station. Central Station got one theme, Ratchet. Every night, every time, the door is open, Ratchet. This particular club, they got different shit. They got a black night, where they just play nothing but nigga shit. They got a white night, where they play shit like Weezer and whatever the fuck. They have a queer night. You know what I'm saying? They have all these different types of nights. And I end up picking the motherfucking white night. Now, I was cool with white night, but I didn't know it until I got there that it was white night. And I parked so far away, I was like, fuck it. I'm already here. I'm just going on in there. So I went in there, got my drink. I'm like, oh, I got my kind of White night ain't bad. I kind of fuck with white night. I'm in my little corner, minding my business. Got me a couple drinks. I was in there for about an hour and a half, two hours. And then I ended up going back to the bar, got me another drink. And I'm, well, I was spent to. And I was standing, I was in the line. And it was a little, it was a group in front of me. It was like a white tribe. It was. They had the lead. They had the, they had the man and everybody, you know, the, the willy hen. And then they had, they had a, they had a die. They had a keys. They had a trichelle. They had a big gun. They had a whole gun. I'm like, damn, they look like the white tribe. And, and. The, the main one was Andrew. He was lit as fuck. Andrew was lit as a motherfucker. And Andrew, <laughs> Andrew ended up turning around. And he was like, hey, guy, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, hey, hi. And he said, well, what brings you to White Night? I've never seen you. <laughs> never seen you at White Night before. I said, well, I ain't never been to White Night, but this shit all right. I kind of fuck with this shit. This shit pretty cool. So he was like, well, I mean, what, what, what you got going on? I said, well, it's my birthday month. I want to kind of, what the fuck? What, what, whoa, wait a minute. God, hey, guys, it's his fucking birthday. I said, no, 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 my birthday month. Guys, it's his fucking birthday. He was like, bro, I got to get you a shot, bro. I just got to get you a shot. Matter of fact, let me get you a drink. Let me get it. Let me get it. I was like, okay, nigga, that's why I was in line anyway. So they got the drink, and then Andrew reached into his pocket. Andrew. Andrew reached in his pocket, and this motherfucker pulled out the Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Rock of Beans. This nigga pulled out the Transformer and the Superman. And all the real pill poppers know them two motherfuckers, them the ones, boy. You trying to go up? Them are the ones. Now, mind you, I ain't popped no beans in 10 years because I don't have an addictive personality. When I want to stop some shit, I just fucking stop it. And I start feeling like I was getting that Bobby Brown lip. <laughs> and I know you getting bored living with you. No, you miss my loving, my fucking, my. You know it. Singing that shit through the mask. <laughs> but I, I, I was like, I, I don't do that shit no more. 
But he just was so persistent. And in the back of my mind, too, I was like, nigga, you ain't never going to do this shit no more. You ain't never going to go out by yourself no more. You ain't never going to go to the club by yourself no more. You ain't, you ain't never going to turn 35 no more. Fuck it. You might as well go ahead and do this shit. Fuck it. Do it. So I picked the Superman. And I went on down there with Andrew, and we all, you know, we just vibing, and my movement started goddamn getting harder and harder. <laughs> and I started noticing, when I walked down there, I started noticing the DJ, he, he noticed that I was there. And he, you know, because I was the only nigga in there. And he, you know, and he noticed, he noticed I was there. And I could tell because his music kind of started slowly fucking changing. Like he was trying to make friends with me or some shit. But he was playing all the jams. And then he fucked around there and Andrew played this shit. And it was like a beam of light. Hold up. <laughs> That's what he did. And I got, boy, I probably dance battle 13 of the motherfuckers in there and beat them all. I just kept running back to the DJ, giving them 20 more dollars. Play that shit again, motherfucker. Killing them. And I fucked around there and we finally left. It's six in the morning. I left that motherfucker. Finally left the damn club. I left the shit. I was finna leave. This motherfucker Andrew called me. I damn near got to my car. Hey, hey, Will! Hey, come back, guy, come back! So I kind of went back up there. I was like, what's up, bro? What's going on? He was like, hey, man, me, me, me and my friends, we're going to another spot, man. I'm like, nigga, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Where the fuck are y'all going? We're going to another party. It's a dance party. It's called Fuck It to Death. I was like, I mean I, I mean, I love to fuck, but I don't want to fuck nothing to death. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. Come on, man, it's a dance party. You're going to love it. You're going to And that motherfucking bean. I'm like, you know what? Nah, fuck it. Yeah, let, let, fuck it. Let's go. So I fucked around there. I went with them. And it was like we went to some abandoned-ass bank or some shit. It was, it was, it was weird. I'm like, where did, who gave y'all the... Who sanctioned this shit? And we walked down there. And as I got closer, that shit just started getting weirder and weirder. I was like, this ain't my shit. And I got, we got to the fucking door. And I was like, you know what, Andrew? I, I, I ain't fucking with this shit, bro. Like, I think I'm good. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm finna go. Andrew was like, what, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, yeah, I'm finna go. And I literally started leaving. I was like, I, I appreciate y'all. Y'all be cool. I started fucking leaving. And then I, as I was fucking leaving, I don't know who Andrew was connected to in there. And I started fucking leaving. And the DJ played this shit. And it was like a beam of light. And I did it again. Dance battled another 15 motherfuckers. And then I leave. <laughs> Finally. I fucking left, and I'm headed home, and I'm just fucking hype. I'm hype, and when I get hype, I want—I like to talk about business and with my brother, Kip Conway. Shout out my nigga Kip Conway. I like to talk about business when I get hype. So I'm, I'm driving home, and I'm hype as fuck, and I thought I called Kip. But, because I saw the three letters, K-I-P, and I, I was a little blur, I was a little blur. I was a little blur, a little blur. <laughs> and um, I thought, and I'm just, I'm going in. Call the number, I'm going in. Yeah, nigga, we finna kill this shit, nigga. Yeah, this comedy show, nigga, this all year, damn it. This all year, damn it. We finna kill this shit, damn it. This all year, nigga, this all year, this all year. And all of a sudden, I heard a, uh, son, what are you talking about? I was like, I called my dad, nigga. And it's because his name is Pop, P-O-P. But I thought I called K-I-P. That was the blur. That was the blur. I called that nigga. 
See, and I told you I was going to tell you about my parents before. See, if there was a Hall of Fame for the saints, and I'm not talking about the New Orleans saints. I'm talking about the saints of God. If there was a Hall of Fame for the saints, nigga, my daddy's Allen Iverson, nigga. My dad is the answer, nigga. He is. They, 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 and my mama, she Lisa Leslie. She just dunking on niggas for the king. But, but, but for real. They, that's, that's their thing. That's their thing. And um, it's one of them things where, <laughs> it's one of them things where they, use, they the ones that they would have us in church all the time. And people used to ask me when I was a kid, all the time, how do you like being a pastor's kid? How do you like that? And I used to want to tell motherfuckers all the time, man, I fucking hate it. I did. Because we used to have to be in church all the time, man. All the time. Y'all don't believe me? Monday, intercessory prayer. I'm 35. I still don't know what intercessory. I don't know what the fuck that I don't. What's the difference between that one and the regular one? Why can't we just do this at the house? All right, I'll give you that one. Yeah. Tuesday, prayer and Bible talk. Now, wait a minute. We just had prayer. <laughs> we had the prayer. We just prayed over the accessories. Now we got this prayer. Why we got a... We just did. Why we can't just combine the two for a one-night situation? Okay, I'll give you that one. Wednesday, Bible study. Wait! We just had prayer and Bible talk. We, we talking about the Bible. Ain't it like studying the thing? I just want to watch Smallville, damn it. Thursday. And see, this is what my mama used to do. Thursday. Uh-huh. You on it. See, my mama used my mama and daddy, this is what they did. They would play little bit. Since I was a little boy. They would play little videos. They would put me around drummers and show me drumming videos and shit like that. They would do that all the time. To the point where, as a, as a kid, naturally, if you keep watching it, you're going to want to do it. And so eventually, I was like, I kind of like the drums. Then they had me take lessons to the point where I was good. And then my mama was like, good. Now you're going to play for the church. Thursday, choir rehearsal. Friday, teen night. Wait a minute. I'm nine, nigga. I am nine years old. You mean to tell me I got to miss TGIF? Real niggas know TGIF, nigga. Boy. Family matters. Boy meets world. Step by step. They could never really figure that last show out. They kind of dipped around with that last show. Eventually, they gave it to Sabrina, the teenage witch. See, yeah, he was the original, OG, but see, they did Mr. Cooper dirty. They ain't leave him on long. They kept switching that show, but see, that was how that went. And then you got Friday, nursing home ministry. That's why I don't like old folks now. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, you got uh, big church, Sunday school, three o'clock service, all that. Nigga, but it got to the point I was like, what the devil team? What they be doing on his side? I think I want to go try out for his for his squad. Shoot a little, shoot a little, go to they shoot around and see if I might be able to hang with they team. It's too much requirement for God. This nigga God want me at everything. Can I get a day off? I am not the pastor. But that's how that's how I was. So calling them was a terrible idea. I can't even tell you what the hell they end up telling me. <laughs> Cause I threw up so bad on the side of the road. <laughs> Nigga, how many motherfuckers are here in their twenties right now? How many motherfuckers are here? Make some noise, twenties. Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck y'all, fuck y'all, fuck all y'all, fuck all y'all. See y'all motherfuckers, y'all twenties. You could throw up right now and just and like act like nothing happened. You can throw up right now and nobody probably would even know it. Nigga, you throw up in your thirties. You might as well turn into the Incredible Hulk, nigga. You might as well turn into the Thriller, nigga. <laughs> that fucking wolf Michael Jackson turned into... You might as well be the wolf, nigga. I can throw up right... Nigga, you throw up in your 30s. That's three days you ain't never gonna get back. 
I can throw up right now, nigga. You wouldn't see me again until the Super Bowl. It's that fucking serious. <laughs> that fucking 30 shit sucks. I'm talking about 30 is the new. Man, get that shit out the fuck of here. I appreciate y'all, man, for all these laughs and shit. This shit is nice, man. Because I know, nah, because I know, I know what it's like to be on the other side. I know what it's like to be on the motherfucking other side. I got booed not too long ago. Not doing comedy. I was doing my music shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got booed. Boo, like, not, not 150, 200 seater booed. I'm talking about thousands of motherfuckers booed. And it wasn't it. See, the thing was, it wasn't even, because I'm dope, nigga. I know I'm fucking dope. <laughs> but it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. You know who fault it was? Multi-Grammy Award nominated, one of the kings of R&B soul. It was Music Soul Child fault. It was. See, me and Music Soul Child, we had did that tour, that East Coast tour. We did the tour with Avery Sunshine and Life Jennings and, um, Chrisette Michelle and Dwayne and Jasmine Sullivan and music was the headliner. We had did that show, we did that tour, did that whole East Coast tour and my job on the tour, I would come out and I would feature a couple times on music songs and that was the fuck it. Go right backstage and go back and eat. That catered food on them tours, nigga. <laughs> that shit was the shit. And I would go back there and eat. That's all I would do. So then we finished the East Coast tour, and then we just started doing spot dates. And we fucked around there, and we got a call to do a spot date in Indianapolis. How many motherfuckers in here from Indianapolis besides Tia? I knew she couldn't wait to, woo! Tia, you the only one in here. <laughs> and we would do that, we, 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 did, we did that, we, we got the call to do that show, so we went the fuck up there, and we, got, we found out that the show was supposed to be Raheem Devon, special guest, Music Soul Child. I said, okay, bet. So we get that, we, we get in the city for the day of the show, and I just was noticing that music and his whole team just really didn't give a fuck about nothing that was happening. It was kind of, kind of like the, kind of like, you know, we, we'll get there when we get there, nigga. And me being who I was, I'm just tagging along and getting paid to tag along to do a little song or two. I didn't give a fuck either. So we got down. <laughs> we we pull up to the venue, and this motherfucking promoter, I, I couldn't stand this bitch. <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't stand this motherfucker. And he ran, he ran up to us when we got there. Oh, hey guys, hey guys. So look, so tell you what, so tell you guys, so look, so now you are a little late. You guys are a little late, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's cool. It's no problem. Raheem Devon, he was supposed to do 30 minutes. He ended up doing 90. It's cool. It's no problem. And he kept on talking. In the back of my mind, I'm like, that nigga Raheem Devon performed for an hour and 30 minutes? And he was only supposed to perform for 30? Raheem Devon, I never met the nigga. He might be a great man. But how many times did he sing, guess who loves you more? How many fucking times did he perform that shit? And I'm looking around like, and I could just feel that energy when we walked in that building. I was like, ooh, it didn't feel good. I could feel it. The crowd was angry. They wasn't born or nothing, but that was just the energy I was picking up, like the spirit. It was something that wasn't right. So we kept on going, and they, the promoter talking to music and his team, and I went on to the dressing room, and I started eating. <laughs> and I went in there, and all of a sudden, probably about 30 minutes later as I'm eating, the motherfucker walk in there talking about something. Hey, Will, so this is what we're gonna do. So I know you saw on the flyer, Raheem Devon, special guest, music soul child. So check this out. You were actually supposed to be the special guest. I, I said, oh, oh, really? He was like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I th and I think, you know, I think it's good. I think it's good because it'll kind of get the crowd to calm down a little bit. You just give us about 10 minutes, you do two songs. Your last song will be with music, you do Flower Child, and then, you know, he'll do his whole set and everything's good. And I looked at that nigga like, no, but but that that thought in the back of my mind popped that punk ass lame ass thought in the back of my mind popped the thought. You're in the business of show business. Anytime you get an opportunity, you gotta take it. 
And I was thinking that shit, but I was still telling him no. And then it came all the way. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it. I said, fuck it. Let's get it. I got it. So they picked up. They made the announcement. Coming to the stage, y'all show your love for Willie Hen. And that's exactly what the fuck happened. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Mind you, this is an arena with thousands of motherfuckers in there. I didn't hear a peep. I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, there's a fire. <laughs> and I, I walked out there on that motherfucking stage. Mind you, the set I had, the set I had was for an after party set. This was because I normally would perform at the after parties. So it really didn't even match what the fuck was going on. The first song I did was Blue Flame. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wish you motherfuckers were there talking about some woo. Because I did, so, so I did Blue Flame. I turned that 10 to flame, let her ass in the 10 piece Wayne. Swear I ain't never seen rain. So I do that, I do, I do that shit. And when I got done doing the song, just like that, it was nothing. I started sweating a little bit, but I knew my next song was gonna get him. I said, I, I, I said, I, I fucking got him. I said, I fucking got him on this next one. Cause this one, this was what it was supposed to end up being anyway. This was the song I was supposed to do. The second song was Strawberry Lights. Strawberry. And I had I had the band version, the band version was playing behind me, and I was up there just rock. Take me to it past the the I said, run it life for me. And we doing that shit. I'm doing that shit. And I'm jamming and I got done getting done doing the song. And it was the quietest fucking three seconds you ever heard in your fucking life. It was the longest three seconds too. And I was just sitting there. As I was done, I was looking around like, damn. And I looked up in the crowd. There's a man up there in the rafters. And I, and I looked at that man and he looked at me. <laughs> that motherfucker looked at me. <laughs> boo! 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 And them boos start raining down like melodies from heaven, nigga. Boo! 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 A big nigga! Boo! Oh, ugly bitch! Boo! Some kids! Boo! I said, damn, they like kids in here? Boo! Some old, ugly looking old lady in the front. Boo! And I'm looking around like I just got shot. Because I ain't never been booed before. So I didn't know what to do. So I'm looking around. And that look of confusion turned to anger so fucking fast. I'm like, oh, so that's how y'all do it, Andy? That's how y'all that's how y'all do? I right, did, well cool. Come to the stage. Y'all show your love for music fucking soul child in. And I was, I was like. I came, he came out there, and see music be so, he just, music is, he is, that motherfucker be focused. He be focused on his show, he don't give a fuck about nothing else. He didn't even know that was going on. He had no fucking idea. That mic don't even work. That, <laughs> that motherfucker be, he be focused. So he came out there, he didn't even know what fucking happened. So we did Flower Child, and I fucked around, and I, and I walked the fuck off. I walked off, he, <laughs> this nigga music. Nigga music, like, y'all show your love, y'all show your love with Willie Hand. I walked up, like, yeah, yeah, nigga. I, yeah. <laughs> I walked the fuck, and I walked backstage, and here come this bitch. This fucking promoter come to me. Run up to me, talking about something. Willie, Willie, Willie Hand, Willie Hand. Oh my God, nigga, hey, man, you, boy, you killed that. Boy, I ain't know you could do it like that. Boy, I ain't know you. I said, nigga, did you see what the fuck just happened? Motherfucker just booed me, nigga. You ain't see that shit. Motherfucker just booed me, nigga. Motherfucker had a Hennessy bottle in hand time. I said, oh, man, man, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know it went down like that, man. You want some Hennessy? Nigga, I don't want no fucking Hennessy, nigga. And I was walking off. I looked back there, then, nigga, and, 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 and give me that fucking Hennessy bottle. You ain't even doing nothing. <laughs> Fucked around there and took that Hennessy bottle and got drunk as fuck. 
But shout out to Music Soul Child, because that's a real motherfucker, man. That's a real motherfucker. That nigga changed my life. I got the call to go on tour with that nigga right after I got caught trying to scam. I'm the worst. Nigga, I got caught on day one. How the fuck? Wells Fargo called me like, yeah, bud, so we know what you're doing. <laughs> Them motherfuckers, <laughs> they're like, you want to go to jail or you want us to take your money? <laughs> motherfuckers took every dime I had. I was on nothing. And a week later, I got a call from Music Brother Reed. And motherfucker was like, you want to go on tour with us? And I'm like, to do what? <laughs> he was like, to perform, nigga, you want to go on tour? I need to go on tour. <laughs> I need some. And that's what the fuck happened. And that motherfucker took me on tour. And from then on, everything changed. Everything changed. I performed. I went to the BET Awards. Regina Hall said I was cute. I almost took her ass to the back. <laughs> I performed at Essence Fest. I got nominated for a Grammy. See, a lot of y'all motherfuckers in here think I just do comedy. No, 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 boo-boo. I don't even do comedy, nigga. I'm just, I'm a musician at heart. But I got that opportunity through Music Soul Child. He let me write on his album. I wrote like five songs on that motherfucker. And I got nominated for that Grammy. But the best thing that music could have did for me, the best fucking thing, was when that nigga took us to Africa. Motherfucking Africa. Africa, Africa. Nigga, sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and just be like, nigga, you went to Africa. <laughs> because it was one of them things where I've been seeing everything in these textbooks all my fucking life, thinking Africa was just fucked up. And Africa, everything we got, nigga, Africa looked like Piedmont. <laughs> South Africa, nigga, where I was at Johannesburg. That shit looked like a, everything we got, they got. And I didn't fucking know. And I was just out there mind blown. E I mean, everything we got, they got, but it's just better over there. Everything beautiful, the people, beautiful. The food, beautiful. The a architecture, beautiful. The ass. <laughs> beautiful, the ass. See, it's some ass in here. But there ain't no ass in here like Africa ass. Africa got some ass. And we got to experience, we got to experience that shit. And I know how, I mean, all the way down, like I said, all, even the food, all the way down to the food. Because I know music like to eat that vegan shit. And that ain't, you know, no, no, that's just not my ministry. It's not my calling. It wasn't my calling. So they was doing all that and experiencing that part of the world. And I was hanging with my tour guide, Bali. And me and Bali, I was telling Bali about everything I like to eat. I was telling him about everything I like to eat out here. So he was like, I got you. I knew a place. <laughs> and so I was thinking Bali was going to take me to some old enchanted under the motherfucking sea ass, dope ass, never before seen ass spot. And this nigga Bali took me to Popeye's. But I was so blown away because I was like, nigga, Africa has a pie pies? <laughs> and I was, and it was so beautiful on the inside. <laughs> they had a wax figure of that thick neck ass lady that be on them commercials. You know the one where every time Popeyes bring back that ghost pepper chicken, they bring her ass back. They had a wax figure of her in there and I was like, wow. <laughs> This is so fucking beautiful. And we experienced that shit and the, the food was so good. And I had that experience and the worst experience in the same day. We shot a video out there. And they asked me how would I feel about shooting in a safari. And I said, as long as we got the gates up in that truck. <laughs> as long as them gates in that truck, I'm good. So they was like, yeah, yeah. So we riding through the thing riding through the safari, looking at all the animals and shit. And we just, just, yeah, just doing the video, just, just having a good old time. And then it was like, hey, so this last scene, we gonna have you around some lions. 
I said, as long as we in the truck with them gates up, we can be around all the lions you want to be around. They said, no, 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 no. We're going to actually be in the area with the lions. It's an actual area. It's a petting area where, the lion, where you were with the lions. And I said, uh-uh, I don't, uh-uh. <laughs> I was dead ass like, no, I don't want to do that shit. And then you know how niggas always hit you with this. They always hit you with this to get you to do some shit. But shit, nigga, we already paid for it. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, all right, all right. I went in there, and it was weird as fuck because the lions, as we entered the area to shoot the video, the lions were all kind of, you know, playing around, and then the lions all looked up and seen us. And then all the lions looked at one lion, and that one lion just did one of these. And all the lions followed him over to the corner. And they all got in their corner, and we over there, shooting the video looking like, what the fuck are they doing? But they were, the trainers were like, just go ahead, just go ahead, just shoot, just, just do your thing, do your thing. I'm like, come through, little babe. Come through, little babe. Come through, little babe. And nigga, next thing I know, one of them fucking lions ran his ass right over, and y'all seen the video, some of y'all seen the fucking video. That fucking lion ran his ass over there to me full speed. Ran through, the, the, my, my model, the girl we had paid, she ran the fuck off, she gone. I'm like, girl, ain't you from here? What the fuck? And that lion ran through my, and that motherfucking lion, she got down, did one of these, and bit down. And she bit down to where she started, the bite started here, but she couldn't grip, so she kept on biting until she actually bit me right by my penis. I got bit right there. Dick here, I got bit here. The scariest fucking shit of my fucking life. I was this close to getting my dick bit off in the jungles of Africa. That's why y'all just can't talk to me any kind of fucking way. I'm a fucking superhero in this bitch. Who the fuck else been to Africa and got bit by a fucking lion, nigga? It was really Music Soul Child fault. It was, <laughs> that nigga wasn't even there. But, it, but for real, that was some scary ass shit. But it was Africa, and that shit was fucking beautiful. And I think, y'all just clap it up for Africa. <laughs> clap it up for fucking Africa, man. Ladies, I just want to say right now, y'all look good as fuck in here. Y'all do. Y'all look, what, what my comedy stool at? I need my comedy stool. I hope y'all don't mind me getting some water. I'm cotton mouth like a mug. Somebody threw some blue snacks up here? Real niggas. Real niggas. But I fucked around there, and I experienced, as I'm standing up here, all you beautiful women in the crowd, and y'all just look good as a motherfucker. And I just want to say, from the bottom of my soul, as a matter of fact, I want to ask, where are the single people in this bitch? You see that? Did you see how fast they answered? Did you hear that energy? Look at them, just ready to fuck. They are. Couples, y'all make some noise, couples. That actually fucked up my joke. I thought the couples weren't gonna say shit. I was just gonna say, couples, y'all motherfuckers don't make no noise for nothing. Y'all were louder than a single motherfucker. For real. But I understand so much. I understand so much why the single people choose to be single people. In the fucking city, especially here. I, can, I know. I know. Two reasons. One, new pussy. Ain't nothing motherfucking like it. Ladies, new dick for y'all. I know y'all like, like new dick, but new pussy ain't, I don't, it's, it's something about it. It ain't even about, 
I don't know, it's, it's almost like it's, it's the thrill of trying to get it. It's like it's the thrill more than the chill. It is. And just, and, and, and it's one of those things where you don't know if it's going to be good. But you just, you, you shoot for it. It could be terrible, but you don't know. And you shoot for it. And, that, and, and, and new pussy don't make me do nothing else, but fr I be in the, in the house getting ready, getting my clothes together, just frolicking. Just, anybody ever frolicked in this motherfucker before? And I got one song that I play when I frolic. I got one, play that shit, can you just play that? If you have that in your directory. New pussy be having me around the house just. If I kiss, if I held you tight In the morning Come with me, man, like y'all don't know this shit Would you mind If I said how I felt to the lead tonight Y'all better sing this part right up Again, cause Never, ever Say what? They gonna start something. They gonna start something. But that was my motherfucking right. That's a 35. Y'all done told it then, didn't I? That's but that's the one. That's the one. No pussy make you do you. It make you do that. That's the first reason why I see a lot of y'all choosing just to be single. The second one, these motherfuckers out here crazy as shit. Niggas is crazy. The ladies is crazy. Motherfuckers is crazy. And this, one <laughs> and this one particular group, ladies, it's, it's, it's ooh. And it just, just troubles my spirit, because y'all, they, they really are my biggest supporters. But it's one group of ladies out there, and y'all motherfuckers is crazy as shit. Not all of y'all, but a large percentage. <laughs> Them motherfucking Team Waste B, goddamn Grand Rising, Rich Rising, goddamn Earth, Sun Moon, Captain Planet, he's our hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. Y'all motherfucker, but I love, I'm so attracted, cause y'all so fucking fine. Y'all so fine, and y'all so creative, and y'all so dope. But just be, what be waiting right on the other side of that is crazy. And I'ma give you an example that you, nigga, matter of fact, I got a lot of blunt for this shit, cause this shit, matter of fact, who has a lighter down there? Cause one, can one of y'all, can somebody like this for me, please? Appreciate it. All right. I'll find it, I'll find it, I'll find it, huh? Oh shit, all right, all right. Nigga, you, did you, all right, Batman. <laughs> Look, I gotta, cause this shit, it's some crazy motherfuckers. And that group, I'ma tell you about one of them. This girl tried to kill me. No, y'all, she literally tried to take my life. Crazy shit. I was with her for four days. And for four days, we were like two, be two peas in a fucking pod. That was my mother. I, in them four days, I was walking around like, I might could. <laughs> I might have could. Might have could have married this bitch. That's how serious I was. We were like, then I, I just connected to her like I ain't never connected to nobody. And it was so, it was so beautiful. And then that fifth motherfucking day, and I got witnesses. <laughs> the fifth nigga, the fifth day. We woke up that morning, we 
She's a personal trainer, so she used to train me. <laughs> Some of y'all looking around like, who, who the fuck, you know, you know who the fuck you talking about? She a personal trainer. So she used to fucking train me. So we woke up that morning and she trained me. And then we fucked around there and we left and she asked me, could she come back to my place? Cause we trained at her spot. She asked me, could she come back to my place? I said, yeah. She was like, can I wash my clothes over there? I said, yeah, I got a washer and dryer, baby. I'm good. <laughs> I got a washer and dryer, baby. So, so she was like, all right, bet. So she decided to come back. So we left, and she was like, can we stop and get something? I said, hell yeah. So we stopped at Chick-fil-A. And we stopped at Chick-fil-A, and we end up, and, and we drive, we, we, we place our order, and we drive, we drive around, and we pull up to the window, and the girl was like, hi, is, uh, this is an order for Charles. And I was just finna correct her and be like, uh-uh, nah, this an order for, before I could even say will, this girl cut me the Uh-uh, uh who, does this nigga look like a motherfucking Charles to you? I was like at the friendly neighborhood Chick-fil-A. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold your horses. I'm like, yo, just yo, chill out like, you know. So the girl looked at me, I'm looking at the girl, that, cause I'm at the driver's seat, she in the passenger seat, the window right there. So me and the girl had direct eye contact at the window. She looking at me like, and I'm like, yeah, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so she ended up, she said, then she said, she looked at the bag, she said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is yours, I'm sorry, I read the name wrong, I'm sorry. So she ended up giving us the bag. And the girl, and the girl I was with, the crazy, crazy legs, I'm sorry, I'm gonna call her for the rest of the time. Crazy Legs took the bag. She looked in the bag. And I was like, Chick-fil-A out of all days. Y'all had to fuck up today. They never fuck up. And they, she looked in that, that she, got, she ordered a grilled chicken sandwich. And she looked at that sandwich. And she, she looked at that sandwich. And she slammed that motherfucker. I told you motherfuckers I ain't want no tomatoes. I told you motherfuckers I ain't want no tomatoes. And I was like, oh my God. So the girl was like, uh, 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 uh. she almost, she looked like she was finna start crying. She was like, oh my God, I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, uh, please. Uh, and, she, and, so, and so she was like, I'll, I'll take the bag, I'll take the bag. And she was, and the uh, crazy legs was finna reach over to me and give her the bag. I intercepted that motherfucker like Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> I took that bag, I said, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. She ain't fuck my shit up, hold on, let me. I, <laughs> I took that shit out, I took my shit out of that bag, cause after all that, Hussing and cussing and fussing, she did. And she looked at me, talking about something. Why you take yours out the bag? I said, Oh, cause they finna fuck your shit up. <laughs> they finna be all up in here with your shit. <laughs> all in the crack. <laughs> they finna be all over here with your shit. <laughs> they finna TT all over your shit. <laughs> cause I used to work at Burger King. I know what they be doing. Them crazy motherfuckers come to the window and my old manager, that nigga never got mad when people would cuss him out. It used to scare me. <laughs> Until I found out what he did for revenge. That motherfucker used to go to that back and used to fuck that food up. And I used to look around like, oh my God. <laughs> so I took my shit. They fucked around there, they, they brought the food back. We left, we were driving off. I was like, look, real talk, this is my friendly neighborhood Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I come here a lot, I don't need that. Please don't do no shit like that no more. I don't do no shit like that. So we, she, we kept on going. She kind of had a little attitude, but we kept on going. And she was like, can we stop at the liquor store? I was like, okay, yeah. Okay, cool, because I want to fuck you. Well, I don't know. I don't like the aggressive type. <laughs> but you know how them red flags, how that shit was a meme and we played with it? Motherfuckers will show you them shits. They'll show you. And she had already showed me. Cause that was kind of weird. And then we got up in the fucking, we got up in the fucking uh, liquor store. And she got mad with the nigga in the liquor store. And I sat in the car, but I had the windows down. And I, I could hear, God, I gotta hear what was going on. And I heard yelling. So I get out, I'm like, man, what the fuck? So I go in there. She in there hollering at the motherfucker because they didn't have no more Crown Royal Apple. And the fact that she even wanted that selection, slick, that was another flag. You want Crown Royal Apple? And she going off on this nigga. Just hollering. 
And I'm like, oh my God. So then she ended up settling on Parmesan apple, which was the super red flag. Look at the motherfuckers in here. Whoa! That was the, I should have taken myself away. And I, I ignored again. I ignored another red flag. So I fucked around there and we got in the car and this time I got a little stern with her. And I was like, hey, now real talk, I don't need you hollering at everybody, every place we go. I go to all these places. Please stop hollering at everybody. What is your fucking problem? Chill out, man. And so she got, a, that time she did get an attitude, full fledged. So we, so we ended up going in the house. Well, I, I, I walked in the house. Then she followed me. The game was on that night. I didn't give a fuck about nothing else anymore. I sat down on that couch and I started rolling my weed. She followed me on the inside and she, she, she threw her bottle on the, on the couch and she walked in the fucking bathroom. So I was like, all right, well, whatever, fuck it. So I'm, you know, rolling my weed, watching the game. I noticed 15 minutes walked by, she was still in the bathroom. It's like, hmm, that's strange. So I kind of looked up and I was like, whatever, fuck it. I thought maybe she might have been on, in, in, in the bathroom on the phone, texting or talking, talking shit to somebody, talking about, man, fuck this nigga, you know, saying some shit like that. So I end up, you know, kind of looking back down about 10 more minutes later. This is 25 minutes she's been in this bathroom. And I noticed her phone was also on the couch. So I'm like, what the fuck is she doing in that bathroom? So I kind of walked over to the door and I was like, because I wanted to see if she was boo-booing. And she been in there for a long time. She's probably letting out a large. Thought she was boo-booing, but I didn't smell any boo-boo. So I was like, this is fucking strange. Now, 10 more minutes walked by, and I was like, I mean, walk, went by, and I was like, okay, this is alarming. So I end up, I know how to get in my bathroom without the key. So I opened that fucking bathroom door. Y'all, when I tell, I, I kid y'all fucking not. When I tell you this girl was standing in front of the mirror with her eyes rolled in the back of her head, staring at the mirror like, <laughs> Nigga, when I tell you my heart fell out of my ass, <laughs> I was so terrified. <laughs> I ain't lying, these ain't jokes. I'm serious, y'all. I was scared as fuck. So, I, the first thing I noticed, oh, nigga, I walked to that. <laughs> Because the clothes, the clothes was, had started washing already. And they was on the spin. I took them shits out that spin. I threw them in a garbage bag. And I was like, hell fucking no. She got to go. I went back to the bathroom and she was still being the undertaker. And, and I was like, hey! I was like, hey! She gonna turn her head off slow. I say, hey, hey, we, I, I don't play that shit. I don't like this shit. This shit is fucking weird. You gotta fucking go. And I'm thinking, I, you know, you know, I came at her, you know, with a little, you know, with a little, you know, with a little man, with a little man voice. You gotta fuck. It's time, it's time for you to fucking go. And if she didn't punk me the fuck out on her next move, it kind of shocked me. She came out of that bathroom. Oh my fucking God, I'm so fucking tired of shit. I just wanted to fuck you. I just wanted to fuck you. I'm so fucking tired of shit. And this happens every fucking time. I'm so fucking tired of this fucking shit. <laughs> so... At that point, the devil was in there. And I knew, and I, <laughs> but so what I tried to do was combat it. I tried to combat it. So she did all that shit and I counteracted. And as she came at me with that force, I had to, I, I grabbed her, tried to shake her, cause I was, you know, trying to get her attention. 
I'm like, hey, you gotta calm that shit down. You gotta stop doing this shit. Chill the fuck out, man. Stop. Chill. Chill. Fucking chill. And that girl back, back. She looked at me. She was like, okay. I said, okay, so I'm grabbing your things now. And because I didn't even want to, I didn't, in my mind, see, and in my mind, I didn't want to wait for no Uber. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to take her ass myself. You got to fucking, you got to go. I'll take, you got to go. So I'm grabbing these fucking clothes and we walked out the door. And we walked out and we got in the car, said, man, look, I don't know what went on, but let's just fucking chill. You know, I'm gonna take you back to the crib. <laughs> and I fucked around, and y'all know how that, okay, so we turned out of my neighborhood. Y'all done been to my crib, some of y'all, we family, some of y'all, we, y'all done been to my crib, and you go, you know how covered to highway, that shit is like a, the gauntlet, nigga. You gotta make that left turn out of there, that's the, some of the scariest shit. Now, it was nighttime, so it wasn't as much traffic, but it was still traffic coming down that motherfucker. So we made that left turn out of the turning lane. So we got, boom, so we made the turn. So we in the turning lane. So we got cars coming, they're coming this way. We're in the turning lane. Then there's cars going that way so we could get into this lane to go this way, like normal motherfuckers. So we riding up the turning lane and I'm, you know, I got a little gas on it cause I'm trying to get in there cause they, you know, motherfuckers don't let, never let you over. So I'm trying to get over there and, then, I mean, out of the fucking blue, this girl grabbed the wheel and turned it into the own to the oncoming traffic. And the girl was she struck. She a personal trainer. She had a little strength, and, but it happened so quick. And all I knew to do was continue to press down on the gas so the cars wouldn't hit me. So I pressed down on the gas to avoid the cars coming at this way, so we end up skidding off of the road, and I was this close to running into a fucking bus stop. I was this fucking close. We ran up the fucking curve, and we stopped. And I, I was just looking like, what the fuck? And next thing I know, this girl revved back, and she punched me in my face. I ain't never been punched <laughs> in my face as a grown man like that before. <laughs> I've been in fights before. And it's been a long fucking time. I ain't never, and I'm like, and the only thing I can hear in my head as she punched me in my fucking face like that was, no, not that. <laughs> it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I heard. <laughs> if your man's on the block, if it ain't. Because I was finna Chris Brown her motherfucking ass. Because you, because niggas will say all the time, I'm not gonna do this or that. I'll never do this. Nigga, when you get punched in your bear, it wasn't no block, nothing. It wasn't no block, it wasn't no hands up. It was calming down. All right, what the fuck was. Psh That's how it hit me, that's how the bass hit me, just like that, just right in the fucking face. So I get out of the fucking car. I get out of the car and I'm pacing, I'm pacing. And I don't know, one of the craziest things, I'm mad as fuck, and we ran out the road into some daycare, and I'm pacing, I'm mad as fuck, and we did, we did. And, I, I, and I'm, 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 just, I'm just pacing around, and the calmest feeling came over me. It was the weirdest shit I've ever felt. And I had just, you know what was crazy? I had just watched that Khalif Browder story. And I was like, I don't want no parts of that shit. So I calmed the fuck down. And I walked back to the car. And I felt like she thought that I was going to kind of, like, all right, nigga, all right, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired of shit. Like, I walked back to the car. I got in. And I asked her, was she all right? I said, you all right? She kind of looked at me like, what the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? I just punched you, nigga, tried to kill you. I was like, you all right? She, she kind of looked at me and didn't say nothing. I was like, all right, cool. Don't you fucking do nothing else like that. I, 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 I swear to fuck, I swear to God. Don't do nothing else like that no more. And she got calm. 
But in the back of my mind, I was like, I can't take this girl all the way home. I don't fucking trust it. I knew my sister was down the street. And she's here. She's the witness. My sister, Shell. She was there. And goddamn, I ended up pulling up at her crib. And I had, think I had texted her. I had texted you and said, I'm, I'm finna pull up. You there? I'm finna pull up. And I know she probably was kind of like, what? For what? Because it was, you know, it was late. I know she got like, what the fuck? And so I pulled up to the crib. And I rang the door, but she came to the door. And I walked in breathing. <sighs> Sis, sis, this shit is fucking crazy. Sis, this shit is fucking crazy, man. This shit is fucking crazy. And she was like, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, calm the fuck down. Sis, sis, sis. And so she calmed me down. I ended up telling her what the fuck went down. And she took it in as a sis. And she left and she went to her back room. Motherfucker came back like Rambo. And I forgot she from Detroit. So that Detroit. That D, the dirty D came, and she walked out that fucking back room. She came around that corner. I can't even do it. She came. She came around. She came around that corner so fucking fast. She said, "Let's fucking go." I left. I left crazy legs outside. She said, "Let's fucking go." I followed her to the goddamn car. <laughs> Sis got in the front seat. She got in, Crazy Legs was in the, uh, Sis was in the driver, she drove. Sis was in the driver's seat. Crazy Legs was in the front seat. I was in the back seat. <laughs> sis, cause she touched, she said, uh, I'm driving. I'm driving this motherfucker. <laughs> sis looked at that girl, Crazy Legs. She looked at Crazy Legs. She was like, don't you fucking touch me. Don't you fucking touch this wheel. Don't you fucking touch this goddamn ignition. Just sit your motherfucking ass back and don't say shit. And I was in the back seat like, yeah, bitch, yeah. <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> so we ride it. We ride it. Because it sounds like the story is over. <laughs> but it's not. And so we driving. And we get to the spot. And her crazy, we, put, we literally pulled up at her spot. And I couldn't wait to pull up. Because I grabbed them old stank ass clothes <laughs> out that fucking trunk grabbed them clothes and I walked to her door and just slung them on the motherfucking door like yeah man go on man and sister was like get your ass in the you driving now you driving on the way back home so crazy legs looked at sis and offered her some palm or something <laughs> I'm like yo get your motherfucking ass out of here like, did she really offer her a drink right now? Get your ass out of here, girl. Lucky we didn't just drop you off some random fucking weird. We literally took her home. So we take her home, and I thought, all right, man, she's gone. And she thought, I thought she went to her house. So we in Metropolitan Lost. So you know how Metropolitan, that's, they got that long ass fucking strip. We went around that bitch. Cause she was at the end of her, she was at the end of her strip. Long, long strip. We went all the way to fuck around. All the we drove all the way around to get back to that front gate. I'm thinking it was over. Nigga, when I tell you this girl, and now we didn't, we we're pulling up to the gate. And now as we're pulling up to the gate, we can see more and more light. Nigga, we get to that gate. I sis, I, am I lying? You just heard her. She said no. That girl was standing in front of the gate. <laughs> Nigga, that's, see, and y'all would think the craziest part, you would think the crazier part would be the fact that she was standing in, the, in front of the gate looking like Cain, but the, but, but the reality was the craziest part was she sprinted. <laughs> She sprinted from her spot all the way down to the gate so that when she got to the gate, she could beat us. And she's standing there in front of that motherfucker like this. So I'm getting closer to this gate and she's not moving. So sis was like, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. I said, 
ain't no weight. <laughs> and I'm getting closer to that fucking gate. And the undertaker's still standing there. And I got closer, she's still standing. Now I, I started putting a little gas on it, thinking that she might move. And sis was like, uh-uh, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing? I said, I, 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 <laughs> And she was like, uh-uh, she was like, uh-uh, what you doing, what you doing? She was like, wait, 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 what you doing, what you doing? I said, shit, fuck all that. Uh! And I pressed down that motherfucking gas, and Undertaker rolled all over. <laughs> I, I did, I hit her. And she... <laughs> I gave you three fucking chances now. You almost killed me. You punched me in my fucking face. And then you pulled this bullshit at the end. I gave you three chances. I ran, she just run. She rolled over that fucking car hood like a stunt man. Man, I kept on fucking driving. I driving. So we on the way to the crib, and I was, and I look, and I drive, and I'm looking at sis like, yeah, you see, what, and I, before I could even finish, sis was like, don't say shit. Don't fucking say nothing. Just be quiet and just, let's just ride until we get to the house. So I was fucked around there, and I was like, well, I, I turned the radio on, and the song that played on the radio, when I turned that motherfucker on. And it was like a beam of fucking light. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Willie Hill. And that's my motherfucking time, man. Get me, I'm a cook 